Hello, in this video we're going to run through how to use the Orbit Reader with a personal computer. There are going to be two parts. The first part is going to talk about using the Orbit with JAWS, and the second part is going to talk about using the Orbit with NVDA. So let's start with JAWS first. Actually, let's start with a little bit of a caveat first, I guess, for JAWS. Um, you will need to install a driver, and I'm going to run you through that in just a few minutes. Um, but the first thing you're going to need to remember is the driver that is installed, for some reason on network computers, it's rather unpredictable. So you're not really sure where to put it and how it runs. So I brought in my own personal laptop and my work computer is behind me, but I decided that that would probably be the best way to go. And just so you know, I have 40 minute mode of JAWS on my laptop. It's not the full version, so therefore it's gonna be what do I call it? Like it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna give me a dialogue in the beginning when I turn it on. The next thing you need to know is even right away before you turn on JAWS to run your your Orbit, you need to put the Orbit in remote mode. If you don't do that, JAWS will not pick it up. So what you need to do to put it in remote mode is to use a um, space with a dot seven and dot two all together and the display will say remote mode then your jaws will pick it up um another thing just really quick i chose to um, connect my orbit via the usb cord i could have done bluetooth but i assume that most people don't have that capability and i just chose to to do it that way um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to um, leave here for a second and I'm going to run a clip on how to install that driver and where to go with it. So the, again, the link is in the description. Be back in a minute. Hello again. I'm going to show you how to download the driver to work the Orbit Reader with JAWS for Windows. The, where, uh, the best place to start would be going to the Orbit Reader 20 User Guide, which is found on the APH website, uh, which is tech.aph.org slash OR20. Uh, then what I did was I went to my table of contents and I kind of scrolled through a little bit and went down to Windows PC and it says Job Back so, so Speech right here. I'm going to click that. And it has um, the driver download and instructions link here. This will take you directly to the Orbit Research Support site. Here we go. So now we have to find that driver. Here we go, OR20 driver JAWS 1.04. So we're going to go ahead and download that. It's gonna ask us to save the file. I'm gonna do okay. Because I'm using Firefox, um, my download icon is here. But regardless of where I am, I, I know I have downloaded it to my uh, to my downloads folder. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And here it is. I must have downloaded it twice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to extract. I'm going to say OK because it's going to go ahead and extract it to the downloads site and here it is it usually comes in at the bottom right here and then I'm going to just open her up and here's your installer right here and you can choose between 64 or 32 bit whatever works best for your system and you should be able to just go ahead and install it and then open JAWS up and it should work just fine Okay, now that we have our driver downloaded and installed, let's go ahead and take a look at how to configure our screen reader. I have JAWS running, so I'm going to do an insert J to bring it up to the main focus. JAWS all news. Okay, now I'm going to do an alt key to go to the options. Menu bar, menu, basics, dot, dot, dot. Okay, and down arrow. And Voices up menu, braille, dot, dot, dot. Braille. I'm going to hit enter. Enter. Leaving menus. Braille basic settings okay. dialog. What I really wanted to just show you was how to add a Braille display. So if my orbit weren't showing here in this box for the default 
Braille Display. I would go Tab, modify, tab, add Braille Display, add Braille display. Dot, 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 enter. And select gonna, components dialog. Okay. So now it's giving me all of these uh, these Act, options. Uh, power Braille 65, up to like Alpha BC 6 not All sorts of different ones that I can install. So as you can see down here, I have Orbit Reader 20. The checkbox is checked. And I would do next greater button. Select the Braille display that you want to use each time okay. you start. To and every time I start JAWS, it'll give me a choice. I can choose whether I want to use the Orbit Reader every time I start JAWS. Orbit Reader 20, no display. I can opt opt for no display or pick Braille, Braille Edge, Braille No Touch. Or I'm sorry, any of these other ones that are options as well. Um, I'm just going to do Hims Braille, no, um, dis no primary display device. right now. Notice primary device okay. colon combo no display M braille to, braille no touch braille no primary I can device colon orbit either way so I'm just gonna leave it because it was orbit I'm gonna do finish braille basic setting um this braille load error that means that if my orbit is not plugged in or if there is an issue it will give me a alert it will give me a dialog box that indicates that that is a that is a, a braille load error and it will say that it cannot load the display. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit, hit OK here. JAWS Home Use. And depending on the kind of modifications you made, it may ask you uh, or tell you that you need to restart JAWS in order for it to take effect. So that should help you out quite a bit. Now that you have your JAWS configured and your drivers installed, we can start using the Orbit. The first thing we have to do after connecting it to the computer via USB is to turn on our orbit and put it in remote mode. To put it in remote mode, we're going to do a dot seven, a dot two with a space. You can probably hear it and the display says remote mode. Now I can go ahead and turn on my JAWS. <clears throat> And it takes a second to start up, at least on my computer it does. JAWS Professional JAWS Activation Dialog. This application requires authorization to run on this system. As promised, here's the um, the message that I, that I would get. So I'm going to hit my tab key until I continue to run in 40 minute mode. I'm going to hit space. Okay, so now it's showing, it's taking me to my taskbar, and as you, I'm pretty sure you can hear that, um, that cursor blinking, it's really kind of loud. Um, there are quite a few commands that JAWS uses to um, interact with the Orbit display. Those commands are all listed in a link in the description below. So when you click on that, you'll be brought to several tables that have um, some links that are embedded in the middle of the Orbit user guide. I'm going to go over a couple of them that you might be a little bit more likely to use right off the bat. The first one is the Start Menu button. And to activate that, you're going to use that 7 and 8 plus letter M, which is dots 1, 3, and 4. And it takes you right to the search box. We're not going to really worry about that, so we're going to hit the Start Menu button again to make it go away. Uh, another one that is um, a good one to know is to minimize all applications and get you directly to the desktop. That command is dot seven eight with the letter D, which is dots one four and five. Okay, um, my JAWS verbosity is on a little bit higher than I normally have it, and that's why it's giving you all of that information. Um, as you can hear, you're on the desktop, your focus is on the JAWS icon, and we can, and there are, what do you say, 35 or 36 um, things on the desktop. So it gave us a lot of information there if we know what we're listening for. Um, to navigate the items on the desktop, it says to use the arrow keys, but if I wanted to navigate those items on the orbit, 
I could do so using dots one and four to move. See that, and that moves. Um, See, and these are all different ones. So, okay, so that moves you up and down. So, up and down icon not rows select, select, or columns, I'm sorry. Select and recycle, okay, the dots two and five go left and right. ITunes, not iTunes, iTunes. Okay, well, there's iTunes right there. And it, because if I keep pressing five and I come to the end, it keeps telling me iTunes. So I'm going to move to the, or I'm sorry, move to the right. So now I'm going to move to the left with the dot two. Recycle, not select open office, not humanware, not Wondershare, not select Firefox, not select. So those are all of the things I have on there. If I wanted to open any of these, I would need to check the checkbox. Space check selected. Okay, and then I would use a dot eight to open the item. So I could open Firefox right now. See hold it back slash program files left parent x86 right parent backslash Mozilla Firefox backslash Firefox dot x dialog. Another program was currently using this file. Okay, but to Oh well I don't know what, what they're talking about for that, but okay, whatever. So now I'm I'm on the internet. And in order to make the uh, screen or screen reader stop talking, I'm using the app or the uh, dot seven. So now I'm focused there. But if I wanted to get back out again and minimize all apps, I would still do that dots seven eight with the D. Minimize all apps. Minimize all apps. Unselected MDDA. There we go. And that'll get me to the desktop. Um, there are several other commands that I would encourage you to um, kind of check out on your own. The main things that you needed to keep in mind we covered. The first thing, remember, the first thing we need to do is put our orbit in remote mode. And the next thing is turn on the screen reader. Never, you're not going to be able to use your um, screen reader along with, uh, along with the orbit without putting it in remote mode first. So that the screen reader can detect it. I'm going to exit JAWS now. Since we've covered JAWS, we can move on to NVDA. Remember, your orbit must be in that remote mode that we talked about, where you're going to use your um, space with dot seven and two. And when that's um, in remote mode, which it already is, because we had just been using JAWS, you can turn on your screen reader. Now I'm going to do that real quick with my keyboard shortcut. Oh wait, that's right. It's not that on my personal laptop. That's right. There. And as you can hear, the, um, the orbit came right up talking. NVDA has a much more limited scope of what you can do with a Braille display. Um, this would be a time when you would use it more for writing or importing, uh, um, inputting some text um, in with a braille display, but really it's not as useful with a computer as JAWS is if you want to keep your hands on the braille display. The main difference between NVDA and JAWS use with using a braille display is that JAWS has far more commands. If you want to keep your hands on the Braille display and to implement those commands that JAWS offers, by all means do it. It can't hurt and it can only speed you up. However, if you are not comfortable doing that and you just want to um, be able to just read with your um, Braille display instead of using the screen reader and have it read aloud to you, then either one will, will work and you um, would just use your panning keys to pan forward and move everything um, ahead. So that's really all the difference really is. Um, other than that, um, I would suggest playing with some of those commands on your own if you are a JAWS user. If you are an NVDA user, I would um, just try to open some various things. Like let's try something here. I had 
I had Firefox open, so I'm going to use my scanning keys. And it's reading here. And if I need to go down to another area. Yep, see, here we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now it's kind of reading the page to me um, on the Braille display. But you might have to mess around just a little bit to get exactly what you're looking for as far as um, what you what you want to use the braille display for and what you're comfortable using it for versus how you would want to use it on a um, the commands on a keyboard. I hope this was at least somewhat helpful. Um, please check the links in the description. Maybe they will provide some more assistance for you. Um, I guess that's just about it. So see you next time.